In this video, we're gonna explore the new features of Python 3.14. To install Python 3.14, all you need to do is to visit the GitHub repository of CPython and then copy this link and go to your terminal and clone this repository using git clone and then the link that you just copied. After the cloning is finished, all you need to do is to change directory to CPython and then in the website if you scroll down a bit you will see the build instruction here so the first thing that you need to do is to run the configure script it has many switches so if you if you want to go into the details you will you can study about that or check the switches using dash dash help but here we simply need to just uh, go through the default configuration and run the dot slash configure Then we run make. And after make has finished, it's time to run make test. So what we can do right now is to just run an ls and we will see that there is a binary file here called python.exe. Even though I'm in macOS, but the generated file for me is called python.exe and that's pretty normal as it described in the documentation. So if I just run python.exe, I will see that the version is 3.14 and it's alpha 7 and that means that we were able to install python 3.14 from the source code. The first new feature that we're gonna learn in python 3.14 is the improved messages for typos. So here I have a python 3.14 interpreter open and a python 3.13 interpreter open just for the comparison. I come here and write a while loop but with a typo in the while keyboard and then I just put a condition and run it so it just gives me the syntax error no surprise because i have a typo here but if i go to python 3.14 and run the same code it will give me the same error but first it has a beautiful syntax highlighting here and it shows the location of the typo and also it tells me a suggestion like did you mean while so it kind of helps me to find and debug my typos in the code so let's say if we say if 3 is bigger than 4, yeah, it can understand and say did you mean if, but it's not 100% correct. Like if I write if like this here, it may say if is not defined. But in general, it's a very great feature. The next feature of Python 3.14 is the deferred evaluation of annotations. Unlike previous versions of Python, which annotations were evaluated right after you execute them in python 3.14 they're gonna execute it or evaluate it only when they are needed to be evaluated so this will increase the performance of python programs decently beside that we have a new library in python called annotation leap which has a bunch of functions for evaluating the annotations so just to give you an idea of how how this annotation lib library looks like I will go and write an, from annotation lib import get annotations and also format. Then let's say I have a function called if this has an argument and I put the annotations like undefined and pass. So right now we have this function and we're gonna evaluate the annotations of this function. So if I say get annotations if it will give an error called name error and it will say name undefined is not defined. So this is the same behavior that we had in previous versions of Python and this called name evaluation. So in Python 3.14 we have the other types of evaluations available like uh, forward ref evaluation or string evaluation. To have those kind of evaluations you can say get annotations if and then pass an argument format equal to format dot let's say forward ref and now it works and it will be evaluated like this so that's pretty great because uh, in python 3.14 if you have a forward ref annotation you no longer need to put it in the strings or import from feature import annotations you no longer need that and that's great and the other type of annotation evaluation that you can do is based on a string which is very straightforward it just basically whatever you write here it will convert it to a string up next we have improvement on JSON command line interface. So unlike previous versions, in 3.14 we have syntax highlighting in JSON command line interface. Let's see that. 
So I have a JSON input. Let's say I have name equal to inside Python. And then I pass this to my JSON CLI. So when I run this, by default, I have a beautiful syntax highlighting for my JSON input. Another cool thing in 3.14 is template strings. So template strings are the generalized form of f strings and they use for string interpolation. The difference between the t string and the f string is that f string is evaluated to a string type, but t strings are evaluated to template type. Um, let's say we have an interpolation like data is equal to name inside Python and age one. And then we create our template like this. We put a t prefix here, unlike f that we use for f strings. And then we can have a static parts like okay, information, data. Then we can put the interpolation that we want. And then we can have any syntax like let's say three dots. So this is a template. If we check the type. We will see that the type is string template lib dot template. So let's see how can we write a template handler to read and understand this template. So for that, from string dot template lib, I will import template and interpolation. Then I'm gonna create a function called template handler, which receives a template t. And here we can just have a for loop for item in T. And we have two parts, like we have a static parts in a template and interpolation types. So to, to differentiate between them, we use is instance to check for the type. So we can say if is instance item interpolation. If it was a interpolation, let's say just print like interpolation and then the item and then a backslash n otherwise just type static part and then the item and backslash n so now if we pass the template that we have to our function to our template handler let's say it will say we have static part information data then we have interpolation, which is containing this data, name inside Python, age one. And then we have another static part, which is these three dots. So this can be a very powerful tool. Like imagine you can use it for parsing HTML. You can making make a lot of template engine and so on. Next on the list is the map function. So in Python 3.13 and the previous versions, if you come and say x is equal to map and let's say we want to calculate the square of some numbers. So we say pow and then we have 1 to 3 and we want to calculate the square. So I just pass 2 to 2 and let's say I just pass 1 extra 2. So we have 3 elements here and 4 elements here. So if I run this, no error happens and if I turn it to a list, uh, this power function is applied to these three elements and these three elements and the last one is basically ignored. So if you go to Python 3.14, the behavior by default is the same. So if you convert it to a list, you will exactly see the same result. But there is an additional option or parameter that you can pass to map function to avoid this behavior and it's called strict. So if you say strict is equal to true and then convert it to a list, you can see that it throws an error that map argument two is longer than argument one. So this strict is inspired by the same uh, same parameter that we have for the zip function and basically does the same thing. And now we have it for map function as well. Now let's talk about the new enhancement that we have on the passlib library. So passlib is a library designed to work with pass in different operating system. And the difference is that it provides an object called pass that it makes it more easier to work with files, folders, and things like that in a cross-platform way. So you no longer need to be worried about different operating systems and the, the way that they represent a pass. So in Python 3.14, we have four new methods introduced to the pass objects. So let's go and check them. 
let's say we have a folder called data and inside that we have a data do folder and we also have an info.txt here and this is just my python program that i'm gonna write the code into it so let's say we want to copy info.txt into the data to folder so for that i come and first import the path from haslib then i say current path is equal to path and then info pass will be equal to current forward slash info.txt so this pass object refers to info.txt here and now i just need to know the pass object for data2 so i can just copy it from here to here so i say data2 pass or just data2 is equal to current slash data2 and what we can do here is that we can say info underline pass that copy into data2 and we save it and we quit so if you run the program and we come back to our tree structure we can see that now we have a new info that takes here in the data2 folder so this is the first method that introduced in the pass object now let's say if we want to copy this file but we want to store it in a full in in a file with a different name let's say info2.txt so what we can do is to just add the info2.txt to our pass and then change the method from copy into to copy save let's run it again and now let's check our tree and we see yes now we have info2.txt here perfect Let's go back to the code and say now we want to move the info.txt back to the current directory. So what we can do is that now we can say data2.move into current. So basically it moves the info2.txt into the current directory. So I've saved this, quit and run it. And now if I change the, if I check the tree structure, we can see that uh, we have the info2 that takes here and it's not anymore in the data2 folder. Same as copy, we have a method for moving a file and changing the path at the same time and it's just called move. So you can say, I want to move, let's say, details.txt. Details.txt and I want to move it to the current directory but i want to call it now new details.txt so now if you save it and run it and look at the tree we can see that the details.txt file is no longer here and just moved to the parent directory which was data and the name also changed to new details.txt so these are the four new methods added to the pass object copy copy into move and move into Thank you so much guys for watching this video and if you like the video please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and if you have any comment please feel free to leave it there. Thank you so much.